So my name is Leif Nordlund. I take care of NVIDIA in the Nordics. <laughs> and this is my excellent uh, colleague, Axel Köhler, who represents our uh, organization of people who know what they're talking about. <laughs> so uh, he will be talking today about uh, the importance of our new ship architecture, Volta what that means for you, and how you can work with Volta when it comes to programming it with our excellent CUDA language. So uh, I, I, please, everybody, turn your mobile phones on silent and try not to breathe too heavily because we need the air in the room to last for the whole session. So thank you. Let's get started, Axel. Thank you, Leif, for the nice introduction. So uh, that's my favorite IBD in the Nordics. It's the only one, but uh, my favorite one. So <laughs> yeah, in the next couple of uh, minutes, I will uh, like to give you an overview about the Volta GPU, the new specifications and new features, and also a um, short overview about CUDA 9, what are the special features which we are integrated new. And um, so, yeah, let's start. So first, a motivation slide. Uh, so you all know that uh, we have a continued demand for compute power in HPC. So I don't want to go to, through these examples. Uh, you know that we have or need more compute power in, in uh, weather, climate forecasting, and, uh, and, and uh, biology, and, and so on. So there's a huge demand in HPC. And um, also, there is a demand in um, uh, deep learning, and especially in the training uh, phase. And uh, I found these examples quite impressive uh, about the um, um, further demand in the last couple of years uh, for uh, compute power from the deep learning uh, side. So in 2015, we see this uh, uh, train training of the uh, image recognition net network, uh, which um, needed around uh, seven exaflops uh, in terms of uh, compute power. One year later, in 2016, another, um, another example for uh, superhuman voice recognition by Baidu uh, with 300 million parameters, this network uh, demanded around 20 exaflops. And in 2017, another example um, from uh, Google here about uh, human language translation, which needs around 100 exaflops. And we see uh, further demand and uh, larger networks, more parameters. So there is a, a continuous need for uh, more compute power in, also in the future, as you can imagine. So that's the reason why we developed uh, the V100. So it's um, the fastest and, um, from our point, most productive GPU for deep learning and HPC. You can use it uh, in, in both because we are supporting uh, single precision, uh, double precision, as well as these kind of tensor floors, uh, tensor cores, which I uh, will present uh, later. Um, so we made it faster in terms of uh, compute power, in terms of memory bandwidth, uh, et cetera. But we also integrated a lot of uh, new features in order to make it more productive, to make uh, the programming uh, easier. Um, so I will cover uh, some of the features, at, at least uh, for the Walter architecture, which uh, are also targeted uh, to make the uh, programming more productive. Um, so the Volta architecture, um, there is a new, um, completely new uh, ISA or SM architecture we integrated. I will cover this later. We improved a lot of uh, new features like uh, NVLink and uh, HPM memory which we introduced in the um, previous uh, Pascal uh, generation. I will also cover this. Um, there is a um, new or improved multi-process uh, server with the Volta, uh, um, which can be used beside uh, MPI use cases, also for the inference. I will cover this. Um, we introduced uh, improved uh, uh, single instruction multiple thread uh, model, which allows new algorithms, etc. And you might have heard about the tensor cores, uh, which are supporting mixed precision in order to uh, speed up 
training sessions as well as inferencing. So here you see um, the um, Volta uh, chip or the Volta board. That's an SXM2 module. It's a special form factor. It's the same form factor we also had uh, with Pascal. So this board is uh, 140 times 70 millimeters. Um, and um, you see here in the middle, um, that's the uh, GPU chip. Then you have unified uh, the HBM stacks here, four of these HBM stacks, and all the other things around is infrastructure, so power regulators, etc. So only this here is a core of this uh, board, which gives you the memory, the fast HBM memory, and also the uh, um, GPU uh, capabilities, the GPU performance, compute power, of course. So beside uh, this uh, board, which also supports this uh, NVLink, we have a PCI Express uh, form factor for Walter available. So it's a normal PCI Express board, uh, which uh, can be used uh, in PCI Express uh, slots. For the uh, SXM boards, you need uh, specialized uh, motherboards, which have the uh, SXM2 connectors, and uh, which um, gives the communication via this kind of NVLink, which I will cover uh, in the next uh, slides uh, later in the presentation. So coming to the uh, Tesla V100. So it's a um, GPU with uh, 21 billion transistors compared to the Pascal generation. We had 15 billion uh, transistors. So this gives us uh, possibilities, opportunity to integrate a lot of uh, new features into it. There's also a new manufacturing uh, process uh, with 12 nanometers uh, FinFET uh, technology. Um, so we have integrated more SMs, streaming multiprocessors, into the V100. So we have 80 uh, SMs here available. Uh, the full GV100 specification supports 84 uh, SMs. So um, due to yield reasons and, and et cetera, we only use at the moment 80 SMs, which gives you uh, more than 5,000 CUDA cores. Um, so a lot of uh, performance. Um, in terms of double precision performance, we are providing 7.8 teraflops uh, uh, double precision. Maybe in previous announcements, you saw also 7.5. So we increased the highest boost clock a little bit so that we can now, in a final production release, in the final specification, um, support or deliver 7.5, uh, 7.8 uh, teraflops in terms of double precision performance times two is single precision performance. And we integrated this kind of uh, tensor course, which uh, I will cover uh, later. Um, per uh, SM, we have eight of these tensor cores times 80. We are uh, providing 640 tensor cores uh, with a V100. So in terms of uh, memory capacity, we have 16 gigabyte HBM2 memory. Um, we are delivering a little bit higher peak performance, but much more um, uh, efficient. Uh, so I will show slide later uh, where we uh, measured the stream performance and compared it to the Pascal. And also the NVLink uh, architecture we improved with more links, with more bandwidth. I will also cover this a little bit later. So about the new SM microarchitecture, um, so we redesigned it for productivity. So um, we um, completely um, created a new ISA. Um, we integrated twice the number of schedulers. We simplified the issue uh, uh, logic. And uh, I will cover uh, the large and fast L1 cache, which we changed compared to the Pascal architecture. I will also cover later the improved uh, single instruction, multiple uh, thread model, and uh, also I will cover the tensor acceleration. So per SM, we are supporting um, 64 
the same number like uh, we had with uh, Pascal architecture, um, single precision units. Uh, we are supporting the same numbers uh, in terms of uh, double precision performance. And what's new, we are supporting also separate integer uh, um, units, which means if you have a, a code, and uh, quite often these codes have inner loops, and you need address arithmetic, um, this can be um, performed parallel uh, to the um, FP32 uh, um, um, to the FP32 calculations to the single precision calculations, so which gives a speed up because you can do it in parallel with a, a separated integer uh, units. I already mentioned uh, we introduced the tensor cores, so we have eight of them per uh, SM, which were not available on the uh, Pascal architecture. Um, we have the same um, size of the register file. Um, we changed the uh, L1 and shared memory architecture. I have a slide uh, um, after this slide here, uh, which shows you the differences. And the active threads are the same um, like we have uh, had with uh, Pascal, with the Pascal architecture. Um, so with Pascal uh, with the streaming uh, processors. We had uh, an L1 cache um, with uh, 24 kilobyte size. Uh, we had a shared memory uh, with 64 kilobyte um, size. So, and we integrated both into a shared L1 unified memory with a size of uh, 128. What does it mean? Um, so we have, uh, with a L1 cache, unlimited uh, cache misses uh, in flight. Um, we have a low cache hit latency. We have much more bandwidth um, compared uh, to the uh, L1 cache uh, with the Pascal architecture. And um, we, have, uh, we can use it as a single L1 cache, this uh, 128 kilobytes. So this means we have more than, uh, we have fi uh, 5x more capacity for the L1 cache. Um, so you can configure uh, out of these uh, 128 kilobytes, 69, up to 69 uh, kilobytes for the shared memory. And um, as I mentioned, that's a unified storage with uh, L1. So we made some experiments where we measured um, the uh, performance uh, when using cache or when using shared memory. Um, of course, um, shared memory um, provides a higher bandwidth and low latency and consistent performance as you um, don't have any uh, cache misses, but the programmer needs to uh, explicitly manage this memory. So it's a a lot of effort uh, quite often um, for the um, programmer. And uh, the shared memory remains the best choice for the maximum uh, performance, but the new L1 design enables programmer to get excellent performance uh, quickly without uh, or with less effort um, than with the shared memory. So this means um, we see here uh, with the Volta architecture, 90% um, or 93% uh, performance um, with uh, the uh, L1 cache um, instead of using the explicitly uh, managed uh, shared memory. So that's a feature which helps a lot uh, in terms of uh, ease of programming and um, uh, gives more productivity to the um, programmer. Another feature uh, we introduced into the uh, Volta architecture is the independent uh, thread scheduling. So with the pre-Volta GPUs, we execute um, 32 threads known as warps, as you maybe know in, in the single instruction multiple uh, thread uh, fashion. Um, the Pascal warps uses a single program um, counter so this um, program uh, counter and a, a single stack. 
Um, and uh, this program counter is shared among all the uh, 32 um, threads um, combined with an active mask that specifies which threads of the warp are active at a given time. Um, so this means um, that if you have branches uh, like this here, A, B, and in the else branch, X, Y, um, and you have the divergency, um, so you have to serialize uh, this kind of uh, uh, execution, and um, this means um, there is no synchron synchronization <laughs> permitted uh, within this, uh, this kind of uh, constructs here. With <clears throat> Walter, we introduce this independent thread scheduling. So um, this transforms the picture by enabling, enabling uh, um, concurrency be be between all the threads. How is this possible? So we have for each thread an own program counter here. We have uh, 32 program counters. And um, this means um, the uh, threads can be uh, scheduled independently and uh, a convergence optimizer um, gives the flexibility and the efficiency to combine the threads which are executing the same program code. Um, um, so this means we have still the, um, the SIMT model, the single instruction multiple thread model, but uh, it allows to uh, synchronize here uh, between the different um, kernels here, and uh, this gives much more um, flexibility in terms of uh, new algorithms. So the Walter independent thread scheduling enables this uh, interleaved execution of statements from divergent branches. So this means uh, you enable the execution of fine-grained parallel algorithm where the threads within the warp uh, may synchronize and communicate. So um, thread may wait for messages in this case here, and this gives you um, much, much more flexibility to to design your algorithms, and uh, you can use many new algorithms which you could not use uh, uh, in the previous uh, architecture without this independent uh, thread scheduling. So I mentioned the execution is still single instruction multiple thread, um, uh, the model, uh, which gives you the high throughput at the end, and uh, CUDA 9 provides the explicit uh, um, synchronization model, which I will cover uh, a little bit later. So a new feature in the Walter architecture is also the tensor core. What does it mean? So we analyzed a lot of the codes, um, especially in deep learning, and uh, we realized that um, in this uh, kind of codes, a lot of metrics uh, multiplications uh, were performed. So four times four metrics uh, uh, multiplications plus uh, accumulations. So this means we have seen a lot of these kind of uh, uh, metrics uh, multiplications. So we have uh, uh, two FP16 uh, inputs, four times four metrics inputs. We accumulate uh, FP16 or a single precision uh, matrix um, to this, and um, we decided to integrate this kind of uh, um, operation into the uh, into special functional units into the hardware. So we implemented it into the hardware, and this gives a lot of performance, especially for the. Uh, interferencing and uh, for the training in deep learning. So we have a four, uh, per cycle, we can uh, uh, process four of these 4.4, 4, four times four metrics uh, arrays, uh, which means uh, we have 64 FMA operations uh, uh, per cycle 
times 640 tensor cores times 1.5 uh, gigahertz, um, which um, is the clock rate for the uh, GPU in the highest mode, gives you 125 tensor core teraflops operation of mixed precision. So you can use it for training. Then you have uh, quite often the FP, uh, the single precision accumulator, or you can also use it for inferencing, which uses then the um, half precision accumulator. So how can you access the compute power of the tensor cores. So we integrated the usage of the tensor cores into our uh, libraries, which we are uh, providing in the newest release. So QDNN version 7 provides tensor core um, operations. And also um, TensorRT 3.0 is providing uh, these kind of operations. And um, we integrated also these kind of tensor cores into the Kublas library, which is available with uh, CUDA 9. So this means it's totally transparent for the um, deep learning user. The QDNN or TensorRT or Kublas are providing this kind of uh, compute power. In addition, we are providing a warp level matrix uh, uh, API, um, which you can use in order to use these kind of tensor cores for other use cases. Um, so it's available in CUDA 9 as a C++ API. And we are exposing specialized matrix load operations, specialized matrix multiply and accumulate operations and also metric store operations uh, in order to use these kind of uh, tensor cores. So if you have some use cases, and we are discussing a lot with the HPC customers um, in, in this regard with this structure, then um, you can use this uh, CUDA C++ warp level <laughs> interface. Um, OK, let's go. Here you can see in this slide um, the performance improvements uh, in the first uh, diagram from uh, P100 uh, Kublas operations with CUDA 8 to the CUDA 9 V100 operations. So dependent from the matrix size, you see a 1.8x uh, uh, speed up uh, with here. Uh, 1024, and if the tensor cores are coming into the play, then you see a, a huge speed up, so nearly up to 10 because of the nature of this uh, um, tensor cores. You can um, provide a lot of uh, parallel matrix operations uh, with the tensor cores. Coming to the HPM memory architecture, so we introduced it uh, with Pascal, the HPM uh, memory technology, which means you unify the compute and the memory in a single package. You have here a, a passive silicon interposer available where you stick both parts together. You have seen it uh, in, the, in one of the first slides, uh, how this looks like. This gives you more bandwidth, of course. The GPU is much nearer to the memory, and memory consumes a lot of uh, energy, of course, and um, uh, gives you more bandwidth, and it's much more energy efficient uh, in this case. Um, also, with the previous uh, GDDR5 memory, you lost a lot of uh, bandwidth and capacity when you switched on ECC. So ECC is integrated in the HPM, in the high bandwidth memory um, standard. Um, so this means you don't lose any bandwidth or uh, capacity when you switch on the ECC, or it's switched on by default, and you cannot uh, switch it off. I earlier mentioned that uh, the 
new HBM uh, chips, which we are using in, in uh, Volta, are providing higher efficiency. This means uh, with the Pascal architecture, we had uh, around 720 gigabytes per second in terms of peak bandwidth. And with a stream bandwidth, we got around 530, 540 out of this uh, 720 gigabytes per second. And with V100, um, we have a peak bandwidth of 900 gigabytes per second, and we get out of the uh, 900 gigabytes per second, 850 gigabytes per second. So this means we have a very high utilization rate of uh, 95%. And quite often in HPC or also in deep learning, you need a lot of memory bandwidth. You have a lot of memory sensitive uh, algorithms. Um, so this means um, this gives you a huge performance improvement. NVLink is also a feature we introduced in Pascal. We enhanced uh, NVLink with a version two in Volta, which means in Pascal you had four links with 20 gigabytes per second in one direction, 40 gigabytes per second in two direction. This means you had uh, 160 gigabytes per second uh, bidirectional. Uh, with Volta, we increased the number of NV links, so six instead of four, and we increased the uh, bandwidth, 25 gigabytes per second in one direction, 50 gigabytes per second bidirectional. This means you have a uh, combined uh, total bandwidth with NVLink um, with Volta of 300 gigabytes per second. So you can also reduce the number of uh, lanes for lightly loaded links in order to save power. It's also a new feature uh, with, uh, which was integrated in NVLink. And we uh, integrated coherent features for NVLink-enabled CPUs. So currently, the only NVLink-enabled uh, CPU is the Power 9 um, or Power CPU at all. Um, Power 8 was also um, uh, integrated with NVLink, with the NVLink version 1. Power 9 supports the NVLink version 2. Um, this means you have between the CPU and the GPU also an NVLink connection. So you can gang together uh, these kind of uh, links which are going out of the uh, NVLink. In this topology you have here between the CPU, between the host memory and the GPU memory, a bandwidth of 50 gigabytes per second, 100 gigabytes per second bidirectional. Uh, this means uh, you have nearly uh, um, the same bandwidth uh, with a GPU to access the host memory like you have with a GPU, which is a, a good advantage, uh, of course, especially when you want to oversubscribe memory or something like that, when you want to use unified memory. I will cover this uh, later here. Um, so this means you have here between the power CPU and the GPUs uh, the NVLink connection, and of course between the GPU, uh, GPUs as well, the NVLink connection. So that's an example for a topo topology uh, here for a power-based system with the NVLink enabled CPU. And here is an example for a topology um, with an x86 uh, system. So here you have eight GPUs connected via NVLink in this so-called hybrid cube mesh topology. Um, so um, four of the GPUs are connected uh, uh, very closely together. And then at the corners, you have an uh, additional NVLink connections to the other quad. Um, this is, for instance, used in the DGX1 Wii, so the Walter-based DGX system, which you can um, uh, have a look at our booth, which is there available. And um, the connection to the CPU is via the uh, PCI Express, um, so it's uh, slower um, than the uh, P9, but 
the x86 uh, GPUs, uh, CPUs, sorry, does not support um, the NVLink. <clears throat> Here, I would like to give you a state of the art of unified memory. What does it mean? And so, with the um, with the Pascal architecture, we um, so we introduced for the first time the hardware um, accelerated unified memory feature. So Pascal was the first GPU which uh, provided this kind of GPU page faults. This means you have a unified memory between the GPU memory and the CPU host memory. And um, if, the, if the GPU wants to access to data which are not available in the uh, GPU memory, then a GPU page fault was initiated and the um, data were migrated from the host memory into the GPU uh, memory, which is a, a big uh, improvement in terms of uh, productivity or ease of programming, because in the previous time, <laughs> the programmer had to handle manually or had to program all the data transfers uh, between the host memory and the GPU memory. So um, this also means that you can oversubscribe the GPU memory, starting with uh, uh, Pascal, um, and that's also a big fit uh, or a big advantage because uh, you can handle much larger data sets uh, than the GPU memory of 16 gigabytes, uh, for instance. So you can allocate... Um, beyond the GPU memory size up to the host memory size. Uh, so that's also a good uh, feature which was provided by uh, the Pascal architecture and which we enhanced with the uh, Volta architecture. And you see here state of the art uh, of the unified memory. What we did, um, there is this spec acceleration benchmark suite uh, which is available and which contains uh, of uh, 15 different uh, benchmarks. And we removed all the explicit uh, data movements out of the code in order to use this kind of unified memory. And you see here you get 86% for a PCI Express uh, based system, um, like an x86 system in terms of uh, performance, and with uh, NVLink you get uh, even more uh, performance. So this means you lose with this kind of uh, unified memory, with this uh, automatically uh, data made migration between the host and the GPU memory, some performance, but you get much more productivity. It's much easier to program the code because if you think about uh, structures, uh, uh, then it was uh, often a mess to program all the data transfers uh, manually. So uh, we improved the uh, unified memory um, with uh, Walter because we introduced uh, with Walter or we integrated with Walter the access uh, counters. So this means we have, or the drivers and the runtime system can use these kind of access counters in order to optimize these kind of uh, migrations between the GPU and the host memory. So this will help a lot. You have seen the 90% more or less uh, performance we get with the unified memory and uh, with the access counters we hope to get much more uh, performance so that we can nearly go to the uh, performance when you manually manage the data transfers. This is uh, for uh, with, with Walter and uh, PCI Express uh, based uh, CPU, which means an x86 uh, CPU, which does not support uh, NVLink. <clears throat> with the um, uh, CPU, uh, with the NVLink enabled CPUs, with the power CPU, uh, we are supporting some uh, additional features. 
So this means uh, we are supporting coherence between the, um, between the host memory and the GPU memory uh, with the power CPU. Uh, we are um, supporting uh, better atomic uh, support and we are supporting this kind of uh, address translation uh, service which allows the GPU to access the GPU page tables directly. So, and this helps also a lot in terms of uh, performance. Another feature we enhanced uh, with Walter is the so-called multi-process service. So it's um, not a good idea to use or to share the GPU between different processes because um, every process which is running on the GPU and you have to switch to another process, you have a lot of context switches, which of course uh, um, hurts the performance and um, well, context switches are uh, not good things because uh, it uh, also consumes a lot of uh, memory uh, to, to uh, save the uh, process state, etc. So we decided a couple of years ago to integrate a so-called uh, multi-process service. Uh, what does it mean is uh, that you have a uh, uh, server process running here on the host system and if you start, for instance, uh, MPI processes which want to share the GPU power, then the MPI processes can be attached to this uh, multi-process uh, service. So this means only this uh, multi-process service has directly access to the GPU. Only one process uh, accesses the uh, GPU, which does not, uh, which means you don't have any um, context switches between the processes. And with uh, Walter. We enhanced this uh, multi-process service, uh, which means it's new, uh, it's, it's hardware accelerated, the work submission, the deployment, um, which reduces a lot the lot launch latency and improves the launch uh, throughput. And um, we also introduced a new um, feature of this uh, quality of service. Um, so you can define this kind of uh, quality of services. Um, address isolation, isolation with independent address uh, spaces, spaces, and we uh, increase the number of uh, clients which can be at attached to one of the uh, multi-process services. So with Pascal, we had uh, the support of 18 processes which could be attached to the uh, MPS service uh, here with Walter, we are supporting 48. One have to say that uh, like um, the MPS on prior NVIDIA GPUs, we don't provide um, fault isolation between the clients. So if uh, one client fails here, um, then it could be possible that also the other processes uh, are failing. So there's no fault is isolation between the different uh, clients. I talked about MPI um, processes which can be attached and that was mainly the use cases in the previous uh, architectures and the previous CPU generations. Um, we also um, have another use case um, with this uh, improvement of the um, launches, uh, of the launch latency and the throughput. So this means we can also use this uh, service for inferencing. Um, quite often you get a lot of inference requests, uh, but in order to um, utilize uh, the uh, GPU, you batch these kind of inference uh, requests in order to put this uh, in a batch to the, uh, the GPU and to get a lot of uh, performance. Without any batching, if you send every 
request uh, to the uh, to the GPU, then you have only a very bad performance. So, but uh, MPS allows you to to get a reasonable um, inference um, performance. So it's uh, seven times faster a year um, without uh, compared to the um, single Volta client without any batching, without MPS, 60% uh, of the performance with batching. So you can use, of course, batching, but it's no longer uh, needed because you get a reasonable performance with the MPS system for inference. So this gives you an overview about the uh, specifications or the speed ups uh, between the different um, GPU versions with the Pascal and the V100. So for training, uh, we had uh, 10 uh, Terra uh, Ops uh, single precision performance with the P100. We have this tensor cores with uh, 125 uh, Terra Ops tensor core operations, which gives you a high speed up in terms of uh, uh, training acceleration. For inference, uh, we used with Pascal half precision. Um, so we can also use um, with V100 the tensor cores uh, speed up of uh, six. Um, we have around 1.5 um, speed up uh, for single precision, double precision. Uh, we have this uh, bandwidth improvement in terms of uh, peak bandwidth, so it's much more. Uh, it's a factor of 1.5 in terms of stream uh, bandwidth. NVLink bandwidth was increased, uh, L1, L2 cache uh, increased. So this gives you a lot more performance in this case here for some use cases in the deep learning. Um, so you see here a uh, comparison for different uh, training setups. And uh, for instance, LSTM training here with one P100, 18 hours, um, compared to the V100 uh, training of uh, six hours. So three times uh, uh, reduction in time on training. Or here you see 18 hours with eight uh, P100s with a DJX, or with a new DJX, you would uh, decrease the time to 7.4 hours. In terms of HPC um, performance, uh, you see around a factor of 1.5 up to 1.8, uh, depending on the, on the code uh, structure. But that's the expected uh, performance, um, which are also based on the specifications we see with the uh, water architecture. With, uh, together with uh, Walter, we also introduced CUDA 9. Since a couple of uh, days or one or two weeks, uh, we, deliver, uh, we deliver the production release of CUDA 9. So you can download it from the uh, NVIDIA website. Um, of course, support of a new Volta architecture, of the new GPU architecture is integrated. Um, we included the support for the tensor cores um, into Volta, especially with the libraries, QBlast uh, library, for instance. Uh, we are supporting this new version of NVLink, uh, and uh, we are also supporting the independent thread scheduling uh, with CUDA 9. Um, so we did a lot of performance improvements uh, with uh, the libraries, so especially libraries which were used for um, deep learning, like the uh, Kublas library, but also uh, with a QFFT or NPP library for image processing. Uh, we have this new concept of uh, cooperative thread groups, uh, which is quite interesting and which I will show uh, later in the, in the slides. Uh, and we improved the developer tools and the uh, platform uh, updates. So uh, we improved the compile times. So this was quite often a, uh, yeah, a big uh, 
disadvantage um, that the compiler did a long time to compile the codes. Uh, we are supporting, uh, in a better way, the unified memory profiling. Uh, we have a feature about this NVLink visualization, and we are supporting UOS and um, compiler uh, versions. Um, so in, term, in terms of uh, libraries, of course, uh, I already mentioned uh, we are supporting the uh, Tensor cores. So we optimize the uh, gems uh, within the Kublas library. Um, we improved uh, the performance for all libraries in order to get the best uh, Volta performance. Um, I already mentioned uh, the NPP FFT uh, performance uh, improvements. Uh, new algorithms were integrated uh, into the QSolver uh, library, so multi-GPU dense and sparse solvers, dense eigenvalue and SVD, um, which we integrated in this library. Uh, we also enhanced the NVGraph library, which we introduced for the first time in CUDA 8, and um, there are some improvements in terms of user experience, so new installed packages, et, et cetera. This slide gives you an overview about uh, the uh, performance improvements um, for these three libraries, uh, in, in particular the Kublas, the QFFT, the NPP uh, library. So in CUDA 9, especially the gem operations for small matrices and batch sizes were uh, sped up by a factor of uh, five to eight times. Also, we improved the uh, heuristics for selecting the gem uh, kernels. Um, and um, you see here the improvements for single precision and uh, for half precision uh, with Walter and uh, with uh, Pascal, so CUDA 9 versus uh, CUDA 8. Um, also for the uh, QFFT, we made a lot of improvements. I don't want to go to, into details here. You can find it also on the website or we will provide the slides, slides um, after the conference, of course. NPP, also a lot of improvements for this kind of uh, image processing. So cooperative groups is a uh, feature which I want to cover uh, now, which is uh, quite new to the CUDA 9, um, which means we integrated a flexible model for synchronization and communication within groups of threads. What does it mean? Um, so the level of cooperation today or in a pre-CUDA uh, 9 um, was only um, within on, on the block level. So there was a synchronization barrier in, in CUDA sync threads on a block level. You didn't have any chance to, to uh, sync uh, on the GPU level or on the uh, uh, multi-GPU and um, you, you, you had a lot of restrictions uh, with this kind of um, communication um, model. So with uh, the cooperative group concept, we are introducing new, uh, new uh, models for cooperation. Uh, this means you can now, with this concept, uh, uh, Cooperate on a on a on a warp level. You can cooperate on a thread block uh, level. You can cooperate on the whole GPU level, and also you can cooperate uh, within um, grids, which uh, spans multiple uh, GPUs. So on a multi multiple GPU level. So this means uh, we introduced uh, new uh, objects in, in your program. Thread groups are explicit objects in, in, in the program. You can synchronize threads in a, in a group. 
and you can create new groups by partitioning as existing uh, groups. So you see here an example um, for this kind of uh, cooperation and you can synchronize this uh, partitioned uh, group uh, with the uh, new um, concepts which are introduced in this CUDA 9. So in, in summary, um, for the cooperative groups, it uh, defines synchronized and partition groups of uh, cooperating threads. It's a very flexible API for clean and uh, robust management of thread groups. It's scalable, so you can create and manage groups within BOBS across thread blocks and even on a multi-GPU level. Um, we are supporting this uh, cooperative group concept on Kepler and newer GPUs, but uh, some of the features are only supported on, on Pascal and above GPUs, so because we need some uh, hardware uh, features which are integrated, uh, or which does not, in, uh, which are not integrated in the previous generations before Pascal. Develop up tools, so we um, introduced the unified memory profiling or we enhanced it. So this means you can correlate CPU page faults with the uh, source, uh, with the um, profiling uh, tools. You can visualize virtual memory activities uh, with, the, with the tools. And um, we are working also on new enhancements of the unified uh, memory. So at the moment, you have to use a um, unified memory allocator, CUDA managed, me uh, CUDA managed memory. Um, this will be no longer needed if the so-called H HMM Linux kernel module uh, will be available. So this means um, we are working with the Linux community in order to use the standard allocator, the malloc, in order to allocate this kind of uh, unified memory. And the system can or will detect that this is a hybrid uh, memory or unified memory between the GPU memory and the uh, CPU host memory and uh, will handle the unified memory in a right way. So this also makes it uh, much, much easier um, to, to use it because if you look through this program here, it looks very similar to a normal CPU application. So uh, you have a standardized uh, memory allocator. Um, yeah, you, you call a kernel instead of, of a function on a CPU-based system, but it's very similar, and uh, um, we are doing a lot of effort in order to combine all the features in order to make the programming much more easier. Last but not least, I would like to point to some additional resources. Um, there is a very nice uh, technical white paper about the Volta architecture, which is available on the NVIDIA website. There is also a blog um, about the hardware features, the new hardware features of the uh, Walter architecture. And the same uh, for CUDA 9. There is a blog entry which gives you a detailed overview about the new CUDA 9 uh, features, which I covered uh, briefly in the previous slides. And of course, you can download uh, the CUDA 9 distribution from our website.